What is up guys, Dr. Sophia here and I am back with another topic. If you are new, then don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you can stay updated on all of my content. Don't forget to like this video and also do not forget to check the description box for my book, Fix It Jesus for Single Moms Only, which is a bestseller and you may be interested in getting the book because in this video, I'm going to be talking about a single mom topic that I get a question a lot about and that is mostly about how I made more money as a single mom and also how people can level up in their career and make more money as a single mom and so I'm going to cover both those things in this video. So let's go ahead and get on into it shall we. The first and most important tip that I'm going to tell you is to get as much experience that you can in any given job that you're in. So I want to give you an example of what this looked like for me. So when I graduated undergrad, I had a degree, a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. I, it's very difficult to get a job without a lot of experience, but I had work security in college. And so I was able to get a job at the correctional facility working as a correctional officer. I didn't even need a degree for that, right? But it's hard to get a job, a better job without experience. So a lot of correctional officers would just like be correctional officers and they're probably still there. And that's not me being mean or whatever. But one thing that I would do that they would kind of look down on me on is I would always talk to other people's positions and get involved in where I could to learn more information. So for example, when I was working in the unit, one of the counselors came up to me and was like, oh, I have treatment team with the residents, each resident. Do you want to participate because I need one of the officers to account for their behavior since you spend the most time with them? So guess what I did? My partner was like, well, I don't want to do that. I'm going to go sit down and whatever, right? I participated in that, but guess what experience that gave me? Because I did that for an entire year. So whereas my position was a security position, every week I will be pulled in for an hour long thing for a treatment team between me, the counselor, the kid, and the teacher, and I was getting mental health experience. That mental health experience I put on my resume. That resume helped me get my secondary job. So I was a correctional officer working 12 to 15 hours at that job and then I have my son and then I moved on to a in-home counseling position and that was literally a job of me making my own hours and once again it was the same exact thing because this was a new position so I started off as a lower counselor position and then literally I got to know everything that I got to, could know about that position mental health wise, because then I was working with licensed, I was more in the mental health field, so I got to know everything. And then I got a promotion to an in-home position, which paid me more an hour. And then I got to know everything I got to know about that job, which in turn helped me get my next job. Do you see what I'm saying? And so the point is, is that a lot of people, whenever they get into jobs, they just want to, oh, this is just my job and I don't want to be bothered. I don't want to do nothing extra. I don't want to do whatever. Yeah, there's some times that we can have that mentality, but it's also some times that when we don't have that mentality and we actually get to learn about different people's position, like most positions that I work, I have probably been an expert on other people's positions, but that has always benefited me because it has always been experience that has allowed me to move up either in that company or move up to a different position. Okay, so number two, go back to school. So when I moved on from the jail, that is when I still was, had my bachelor's, but in that particular moment, and I talked about this in one of my videos, I will try to link it down below if I remember. And I also have some links that I'm gonna link down below because I have a lot of blog posts on more tips on how you can go back, back to school as far as getting it paid for and all that stuff. So I will link that down below as well. But going back to the story, so, as I was working in a counseling position, I only had a bachelor's degree because that is what was required at the time. One of the clinical supervisors came in and she was a licensed clinical social worker. And y'all know this is a faith-based channel. And so I, when I saw her signature, I still remember this, God was like, you need to become a licensed mental health professional. And then that's when I started my master's program. So this is what I'm going to talk about going back to school. And y'all can say whatever y'all want to say, but 
at that particular time, a year at, like once I got into my master's program, a year after I was in my master's program, the entire state regulations changed. And if you were not in a master's program and you only had a bachelor's, then they were not allowing bachelor's level people to do counseling anymore. So I was literally saved for the fact that I listened to that moment. So that's why I believe in God. Anyway, moving on. Since I was a single mom, and these are some of the blog posts that I'm going to link down below. Obviously, the biggest concern is how am I going to get to school and who is going to watch my child? For me personally, online school was the best option for me because for those very reasons. So with that, first, I'm going to say that before you get back to school, it pays to have experience in the degree that you're going towards. So one thing that I even saw in my master's program was like some people were like in completely different fields trying to get a master's degree in counseling. Can you do that? Yes. But just like I said, when I started off as a correctional officer, it's going to be very difficult for you to get a job in a completely unrelated field with a master's program if somebody else is getting like for example those people would have a degree and experience in like some administrative field whereas I had a bachelor's degree and I had been working in the mental health field by that point for like four or five years and so it's kind of like try to have experience because if you don't then you're going to be competing with people who do have experience so be very proactive before going into your graduate program don't just take something because it sounds nice actually research the program so for my particular master's program I just didn't get any degree in counseling I wanted to be a licensed counselor and so literally I went to Capella University and it was a K-CREP accredited program for marriage and family therapy which means that for my state and for most states, it allows you to be licensed. I did not go on to be licensed, but I did go on to be a national certified counselor, which is a national recon recognized for the Board of Counseling. But the way I was able to get that certification is that I would have had to graduate it from a K-CREP school. And so when I was researching my program, not only was it a K-CREP school, which is a counseling accreditation, a nationally recognized counseling accredited school, it was also included an internship, which was a requirement if you want to be licensed or if you want to be certified. Internships also give you experience because even though, even after I finished my master's program at my internship at my counseling agency, the clinical supervisor actually did offer me to be an intern therapist after I got my master's degree because that's how good he thought I did. But do you see where that comes from? Because even as I was getting my master's program, right, once I, once I got into my internship, you have to find your own internship. And so since I was, let me back up because I feel like this is getting confusing. So before I even started, I literally looked at the entire curriculum. I knew exactly what I was going to major in. I knew exactly, I knew exactly that the program could get me licensed. Since for counseling programs, it has to be online and in person combined. There were three colloquias that I had to attend where I had to go in person. I knew exactly when I was going to go. I knew that I had how much I had to save up. See, these things matter because as you guys, if you guys know my story, the like the literally the last few months of my master's program I had lost my job but I still had to go to my colloquia but see I had saved up the money because I already knew that I was going to do that anyway and so it wasn't like that even though that was a crazy situation which I'll link my video down below on that I was it didn't hinder the fact that I wasn't able to finish school I was still able to finish school if that makes sense so I say that that planning in advance helps Knowing your career outlook helps. I knew that it was probably likely that I was going to get a, a job in the counseling field because I was already in the field and I could even move up in my company. That was still a thing. So never just, oh, and then also looking up accreditations for that school. Never, I have seen people go to some janky online schools talking about they getting a degree in counseling and then they trying to be a licensed counselor and their stuff is not recognized. Do your research. Don't just give your money to people talking about, oh, you're going to be a nurse in five months or whatever, and you don't know if these people are accredited. Actually do your research so that you are not wasting your time and your money, because I can promise you that has happened to a whole bunch of people going to some of these online schools that are not accredited properly. So even knowing I had to go to an accredited school because I wanted to get my stuff straight, 
I knew I had to go to Minnesota twice. I went to a whole bunch of colloquials. That was required. And I knew I had to save up for that because one of the requirements is that the school had to have a combined online and in-person thing. So my point to you is try to plan for that. My second point is try to get people to pay for it. So after my master's program, I started working for the city. Most city jobs have a program in which they will pay for your school or they will pay for like loan repayment. So I didn't get it at the city job because I was being lazy, but I did get it at my second job in which they had tuition reimbursement and this was for my PhD. So literally I did that for every quarter. So all and so that was a federal contracting job. A lot of city jobs, a lot of a lot of good jobs period will have this. Even if they don't, if you are already working in a field and you can convince your employer that getting your degree or continuing or continuing continuing your education will be good for them then oftentimes they will help you pay for it so even in my phd program this girl was going for like 5 years because her job would only pay for one class at a time and she was like i am completely okay with that because i'm not paying out of pocket for it so even making those strides is whatever because you have a job they're paying for your degree and then once you once they finish paying for it, they'll probably give you more money or give you a promotion. So be sure to either try to position yourself selves in companies that are willing to pay for your education or try to position yourself in or ask your company that you're currently working for to pay for your education or even try to position yourselves in big companies. Like I know a lot of y'all like small mom and pop shops and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you can position yourself in a bigger company where they have more resources to actually pay for your school, try to think along the lines of that. And I would say also research your topic of study. So certain things that we know, even with a bachelor's degree, you're going to make money. Technical fields are like that. Anything that have to do with computers, apps, computer science, engineering, we know, you know, that certain fields with the bachelor's degree, you're going to make money. So if you know it is not in your limelight to go back to and get a master's and PhD and all of that, then consider getting a degree that can make you a good amount of money as a bachelor's degree. And then if you are going back to school, make sure that you research the degree and research the outlook and make sure that you can get a good paying job in that field if you were to pursue that degree. Okay, third, keep moving up in your job. I don't know why people are very afraid to keep moving up in their job. I have seen people that I have known, even back at the correctional facility, where I think they was probably making about thirty-five or forty thousand dollars, and they were like, "Oh, I'm about to, I'm going to sit here until I retire, and then I can retire with forty-five thousand dollars, and then, cause, cause you know when you retire, they don't pay you your full salary, and there's, and they're sitting up there acting like that's wonderful. Now I don't want to down their expectations of themselves, but I kind of feel like. One of the biggest mistakes that people make is thinking that they need to stay in one spot or one job and just stay there forever. And like you're indebted to that place forever. You don't owe these people nothing because if you die tomorrow, they will get, they will post your job online and keep on ticking. I can say that I stay at jobs maybe three, four, even five years, but I have no qualms about moving on. The way that I determine that is on any given day, if the job becomes a dead end, meaning that there's no way that I'm getting more money at this point, there is no way that I am... I can move up like some jobs, they just don't have positions to move up. And so that is me moving on. Um, If it doesn't meet my needs, like, for example, if I feel like, okay, y'all trying to overwork me or y'all working too much or stressing me out, whatever the case may be, you should always be seeking to move higher and higher and higher and higher in your position. Never should you say, oh, wow, I have this one position as a desk clerk and this is where I want to stay. It's like, okay, but then then you're like, well, I don't have any more money or I don't, but it's like, okay, did you implement the other steps? Even as that desk clerk, are you talking to other employees? Are you volunteering so that you can get experience in other areas so that you could put it on your resume and then possibly move up in the job because, you know, people like you around the office, they know that you know things, that you're trustworthy. Are you saying, hey, as a desk clerk, can I go back to school because maybe you are working at a law firm for criminal justice or or back to law school and can y'all pay for it? These are the things that takes you from being a desk clerk for 20 years and just sitting there and complaining about how you don't have no more money 
to taking you to, yes, I'm a desk clerk today, but in four years or five years, I plan on finishing law school. And the way that I'm going to do that is by working hard at this paralegal firm or this law firm for a year as a paralegal. Then I'm going to get tuition assistance and go back to law school. And then I'm going to work for, as a lawyer here because I already know them. And that is going to give me more money. So it is a, a situation where you do have to start to plan your life and not just feel like, oh, I'm just going to stumble into like a good career. Career. That's literally when people ask me, that's how I planned from my master's and from my PhD. And for my PhD, I did not talk about that. The reason why I decided to get my PhD is because by that time, and this is just such an honest story, by that time, I knew that I wanted to, you know, start my entrepreneurship. I had was writing blogs. I wanted to write books. And honestly speaking, I wanted to get more experience, as much as experience that I could to help people because I and I also knew that a PhD holds weight. And so y'all can feel how you feel about it all you want to. But at the end of the day, it's a lot easier for me to get opportunities as Dr. Sophia Reed than it is as Sophia Reed, even if I have a master's because it just says Sophia Reed. And so I had that foresight in mind thinking that, you know, when you go into certain circles, having a doctor on your name they do automatically put some respect on that because of what you had to do in order to obtain a doctorate degree. You know, it does garner you an expert in your field. And so that is what I did knowing the direction that I wanted to take for my future. But once again, you have to think about that. Don't just be getting degrees and going places and getting degrees, this, that, and the third, and you don't know what you want to do with them. I have seen people get degrees because it sounds fancy. And then when they get them, they just wasted a whole bunch of money and and it didn't help them in any way, shape, or form. So I would say pay attention to that. All right, guys, these are all the tips that I got. Hope that you enjoyed this video, and I will talk to you guys another day, another time. Bye, y'all. Not ready for the show to end? It doesn't have to. You can head over to my site where you can read hundreds of articles. And also, you can feel free to shop my store where I have all of my products for sale. And last but not least, for even more video content, feel free to visit my YouTube channel where I talk about a wide array of content. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And until next time, stay blessed.